Hi there, welcome to Premier Presents, and we are joined today by our friend Connie Deacon. Connie, thank you so much for uh, taking the time and spending a few minutes with us here. Well, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Great to be with you, Sean. And I, I understand congrats are in order. First of all, the number one uh, most downloaded audiobook on iTunes is what I'm told. Congrats on that. Well, thank you very much. It came as a surprise to me. My neighbor, two doors down, who has a son at Harvard, uh, emailed me one day and said, Hey, congratulations. Uh, you're number one. I'm, I'm what? <laughs> and his son went to download it because uh, they had recommended it there sure. and saw it. So I grabbed the screenshot, of course, <laughs> when you're uh, number one there. And it was... Uh, quite a, a nice and very pleasant surprise. Well, I'm certain that that represents many years and uh, hours of hard work on you and your team's behalf, so uh, congrats but to all of you. props to my neighbor for letting me know. <laughs> That's I right. I never have known that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mentioned the ebook. Uh, you are all, you're a communicator, uh, frequent uh, consultant to organizations, but author, obviously, as well, of Talk Less and, and Say More, uh, Three Habits to Influence Others and Make Things Happen. And I'm just going to jump right in. Um, you're known uh, very well on the topics of leadership and influence, and I think a lot of people would say those are the same thing. Or ask the question, are they the same thing? So I would point that question to you, Connie. Yeah. Define those for us and tell us if they are similar or different, what they are. Uh, there are similarities, but there is an epic difference between the two. There's an epic difference between impact and influence. Anyone can have impact, and many people do. Snooky has impact, for example, <laughs> okay? <laughs> do you call her a leader? Well, maybe so, if you're in her tribe. Right. But impact is fleeting. It is momentary, and anyone can do it. Hmm. Influence, on the other hand, is sustainable. It has a lasting, lasting um we want to call it. I don't want to call it a lasting impact, but a lasting uh, effect in the mm. world where things change, transformation happens. People move from merely doing what they're supposed to do, meaning complying with you, to being committed to you. People move from uh, sounding like they're just volunteering, which is great, as opposed to surrendering to you. Okay. There's an epic difference between the two. Anyone can lead if you have one follower. Hmm. Technically, you're a leader. But do you have a devotee? And hmm. do you have this lasting change in the world? That is influence. Interesting. Very, thank you for that distinction. And, and uh, those are those are key distinctions, but very important as as people lead, and and that's something you speak on frequently. Uh, I mentioned you do consulting as well, but but quite often are speaking to associations or corporate groups and their attendees. Um, but most of our viewers today are event planners, and uh, as they look at speaker options and and. I'm sorry. No, I'm saying hello to the event planners. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> hello to them, exactly. Well, and one thing that's key, as you know, is customization for for organizations and, and for those attendees that are there. It help us and as event planners, what are one or two things that you ask for that you say these are key for me to really be able to customize my presentation? You're an expert in leadership and influence, I've literally written the book on it. But how do you customize that? What are the things you use to really drill down and be effective in front of their attendees? Great. Well, the first thing that, that I ask every uh, for every keynote and every program I do is what is your ideal outcome? What specifically do you want people to do as a right. result of this? And many times they'll say something like, well, I want them to understand. And I say, no, that's not an outcome. That is a derivative on our way there. Uh, but what yeah. is the outcome you want? How do you want things to be transformed? And then we have to look at this audience and say, what do they want and value? We also have to say, what is significant to them? In, in other words, what is at stake for mm. this audience? We need to understand specifically where they're coming from, what their resistance points are. Also, I need to know specifically what's their starting point. Mm. You know. And what are the gaps? Because any program is to take an audience from point A to point B. And we have to understand both of those. What specifically is that point A of the audience? Why might they resist this? Do they feel like, I've already heard this before, this is nothing new, <laughs> same old, same old, you know, all those kinds of resistance that you have yeah. from the, the people who are attending. And, and then 
the point B. Where specifically do I want to take them? And what is this unique point of view that's going to get them there that they will have those key takeaways? Because my goal is always for them to walk out of there and say, I'm implementing this now. Hmm. So at the end, I always have a do it now session. How do we do this right now? How do I implement this? Otherwise, it's just an event, and I'm in the business of transformation, not just let me come in and do a program for you, because again, guess what that would be? That would be I would be having an impact, but I want to have an influence, a lasting yeah. influence on this audience so the event planner can say, wow, I saw a shift here. I saw a change. Terrific. Well, you you mentioned the word takeaway, and that that's such a a, a key phrase for so many uh, individuals that are planning events and 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 uh, working through the speaker process. It, the difficulty for an association, corporate group, whatever it may be, is they may have a very wide spectrum. Maybe there's a thousand people in attendance, and they're obviously C level individuals. But then you have people down down that process as well. It, it's difficult to have actionable items across such a broad spectrum. What, what are one or two things that you feel like transcend when it comes to takeaways, transcend wherever you are in position, but you feel like people can truly walk out and put those things to, to immediate use or immediate uh, in, impact and influence? Well, for example, in um, I have three different keynotes, but one of them, let's say, is this talk less, say more. Mm -hmm. And with that, there are three really key elements, and that is how to connect with people. Okay and connecting by what they want and value. Hmm. So they walk out of there understanding what they specifically need to do to better connect, to know what are my pitfalls? Where do I get stuck every time? Hmm. So most communication failures happen around connecting. And then conveying, I teach them how to use portion control. Most don't realize this, but we just verbally throw up all over people, <laughs> and uh, we have the fire hydrant habit, meaning yeah. that you know people come to meetings wanting essentially a really good gulp of water, but what right. do we do? We flood them with <laughs> all the information we think they could possibly need, and what happens is a confused brain does nothing. Hmm. And then another takeaway for them is how to convince people, and the d convincing means that so that the people truly feel committed that you've transferred ownership of this idea and they say, I can't wait to do this, as opposed to, um, you know, this would be nice if I had time, yeah. but I'm so busy I really don't have time. So it's my job to make sure that it resonates clearly, that I'm not getting up there and reporting at people, because I sure. think that's what's wrong with many meetings today. We're getting up there and we're hosting read-a-thon, report-a-thons, <laughs> as opposed to resonating with what specifically can that audience go and do that will change their lives wow. and make it easier because wow. we're crazy busy today oh that, we, that yeah that's definitely so, the case. so giving them 20 points is the equivalent of giving them big bat zero because they don't have the time to implement them we need to really get to the crux of the matter i, I believe that you simplify to amplify and that's what I try to do with my messages and make sure that we hone in on specifically what does your audience need. Even if it's broad, we can find those gaps, those similarities. And then I can do either a breakout session afterwards for different groups. Generally, I'll go in and then I need to meet with the leadership team too on how sure. are we going to implement this. And always do follow-ups, whether it's webinar, anything. I am deeply, deeply, deeply determined to make sure that these messages matter and are implemented. It's not an event and bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't appeal to me. Transformation appeals to me. Well, and your, your passion shows through and such a salient point that if you throw too much information, you have to almost be guarded. And it's a gift and skill to, to be able to convey that but not over convey. And then because paralysis sets, sets in and then you have uh, someone yeah. kind of frozen with too much information. Yes. I was working with the um, leader of a global sales team and he said, Connie, I don't get it. He says, I've got these initiatives for the team and they just can't seem to implement them. You know, what is wrong with them? I said, well, show me your initiatives. Let's take a look at these. So he whipped open his laptop. <laughs> and there were 20 of them. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you can't remember them either. <laughs> we got a problem. So if we can bucket these into three 
just important points, you know, bucket them, taking them, and let's simplify them, and then you'll amplify, and guess what? People will get it, and they'll implement. You give them too much, you got nothing. Frozen. Nothing at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, Connie, it, we're, uh, I committed to you that we would keep things fairly short and sweet, because uh, you have a, a beautiful home office behind you, but you, you probably don't see it often as you're... Uh, <laughs> That's right, I'm on the road. On, on the road, and I'm sure you've got uh, a million travel experiences and stories, but I always like to give an opportunity for a, for a fun, quick travel story or debacle. Oh. Those are the fun ones. Oh, I love it. Well, I was in Columbia, South America recently, but darn it, the Secret Service wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> but as I'm watching that now, I'm saying, oh boy, I know all these places. And uh, I just got back from, from China, and uh, it was just fascinating to me uh, watching the differences between the cultures. I loved it. Up on the 56th floor, uh, and I could look out, and it was just magnificent wow. but everywhere I went Sean people wanted to take their picture with me and then I, I realized the blonde hair blue uh, eyes there you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what they thought but, but everybody was stopping and wanting a picture I just felt like such a superstar and you were like, celebrities just it was just my hair color that <laughs> yeah and so I, you may see some pictures of me posted somewhere except in china you know there's no uh, facebook but right sure apparently i'm famous now in china. <laughs> <laughs> well connie that you're everyone's famous for something and uh, even if it's hair color it's nice to be famous for something isn't it I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again so much for the uh, for the chance and uh, to chat with you, and congrats again on being number one uh, most downloaded audiobook on iTunes. That that's a significant yeah. feat, and uh, we were and our team was excited to see that for you and your team. But uh, thank yeah. you so much. The book is now in the written book, by the way, is now in five different languages. And wow! Such. So so that you know the printed version that Wiley did is so that's exciting too. Terrific! So thank you everybody who has has had a part in that. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Connie, travel safely, and we will uh, connect with you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye, Thanks everybody. Thanks so much.